see everybody. Have been a great help to see the 
throat and to leave. Because sometimes I wanted to say something and I looked at you and I know that wasn't the right word to say at that time. So I just want to thank God for you. And I pray for him to go away else God to you that you will do the things he wants you to do. And it will be pleasing in his sight. So see the road, can we stand and give God Tell it a good fair way.
how many want Jesus to walk with them. understand that this wall that we walk yeah. it comes with a whole lot of challenges yes, but if Jesus is walking with us mm. then that means that we can endure the challenge yes, have I got a witness yes. I like when the Bible says that the race is not given to the swift mm -hmm. nor the battle to the strong yeah. but those who endures yes. amen, amen. And you can't endure if you stop walking Hallelujah. Amen. You can't endure if you stop trusting. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Tevin. Brother Tevin. He, he, he's like that. He's like that son that, that turned 18. I was grown now. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he's, 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 he's going from regular milk to silk milk yeah. now. So. Amen. Got his wings and ready to fly. All right. So, so we we come here, man. We gonna we gotta pray for you before yeah. you slip up out of here before we get a chance to pray for you. So why don't you stretch your hands this way? Let's let's, let's make sure we keep him covered in prayer. For you. We thank you for the life and the gift and the anointing of this your child. Yes, Lord. God, we know that you know best for him. Yes. And you know uh, what you're leading him to now. Yes. So we ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, that you order his steps for your word declared that the steps of a righteous man is declared and ordered by you. Yes. So we ask you now, God, that you lead him and guide him in the way that you would have him to go, that you would take his gift and continue to use it, that you would increase your anointing upon his life. Yes. And then, Father God, that he'll continue to present his gift unto you. Yes. Lord, that it will bring you honor and praise and glory. Yes. I ask you, Lord, right now that you enlarge his territory. Yes. And allow him, God, to continue to be effective, but even more so, God, to keep you first in all things. Yes. So we thank you now. We give your name praise, honor, and glory for what he has done here. Yes. But we thank you even more for what he's about to do. Yes. Keep him protected. Keep your arms of protection around him. Yes. Keep those things that are not of you away from him. Yes. And allow him, Father God, to seek you in all that he does. Yes. And we'll be careful, Lord, to give your name all praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. All of God's children said, thank God yeah. and amen. amen. All right, man. All right. We want to see you climb that mountain. Amen. Amen. See the grove. Cornerstone. How y'all doing this morning? Amen. I'll tell y'all something funny. I, I got a chance to spend a little while down here uh, uh, Friday with Pastor West and his brother-in-law. Boy, if you ain't never laughed, that young man had me in stitches. I left here, and I was just like, boy, oh boy, oh boy, if every one of us had one of him, we would never stop laughing. Amen. It was an awesome time that we was able to spend down here for a little while on Friday. Amen. We are coming to the close of another year, and it happened fast, didn't it? Amen. This week, I want to challenge you this week. I want to challenge you this week to focus on something that you're thankful for. Amen. Amen. To focus on something that you're thankful for. And before you eat your meal on Thanksgiving, I want you to share with somebody something that you're truly thankful for. Have I got a witness? I want to share with you something I'm thankful for. Um, last year in July, the doctor said that I wasn't going to make it, amen, um, in the hospital for COVID. And he said I wasn't coming home. But God, amen, amen. amen. but God, but God, I, I, I left the hospital. I left some weight in the hospital, amen. amen. I couldn't lose weight. I got sick. I left some weight, praise the Lord. And good thing is the weight checked out and went another direction. He didn't follow me home, so I'm praising God for that. Um, but I'm thankful for that because I still have another opportunity to share why I'm thankful. Amen. Amen. Y'all, y'all, y'all should get excited in here because we are being seen and not viewed today. Have we got a witness? If you're able to still lift up your hands and give God praise, if your loved ones haven't got the message that you are no longer with us. So we ought to just be happy and give God praise if it ain't for them. I don't care what your, your financial status is this morning. I don't care what's going on in your house. The fact that you are still here is enough to give God praise. 
forward because listen to me. If you're still here, God has the opportunity to change the situation. But if you're not here, you're not going to understand if the situation ever changed or not. So I'm going to be like David. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its, come on here somebody, makes its close in the Lord. Amen. The righteous folks, they'll hear of it and be glad. Have I got a witness? Simply because if it had not been for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can I just share with you briefly this morning? I want to share with you this morning from the, the, the book of Acts. Amen. And if we study that, we find out the gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But when it gets to Acts, this is what they call Acts of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts of the Holy Ghost. And if you read Acts, you'll find... That is so many things going on, but it's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Meet me in Acts chapter number 28. Meet me in Acts chapter number 28. I just want to share a familiar passage of scripture with you. Amen. Acts 28, when you have it, stand to your feet. We're going to look at the first six verses. Amen. Again, very familiar passage of scripture. <coughs> Amen. And the word reads, Now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta. Mm -hmm. Some versions say Malita. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome. Because of the rain that was falling, and because of the cold, but when David, or excuse me, when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. Verse 4 says, so when the natives saw the creatures hanging on his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom, the, whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. Verse five says, but he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm came to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. For a few minutes, I want to use as a subject. Shake it off. Shake it off. Look at look at somebody and tell, tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. Whatever you do, just shake it off. Amen. Have your seat. I see you, Josh. I see you. I see you dancing here, brother. I see you. Father, thank you now. All of you, none of me. Speak now, Holy Ghost, clearly that we may know, understand, recognize, and apply. In Jesus' name, Amen. Shake it off. Shake it off. When we look at this passage, there's so much in these verses, these first six verses, that this thing could have been titled some of anything. Have we got a witness? This one message, uh, uh, um, First Lady West, that we could have used as a, as a subject this morning. Don't trip off the trip. Have you got, have you got a witness? Because you remember Paul was now taking a trip. Amen. And things began to happen. And sometimes when things happen unnecessarily or unexpectedly on our trips, we tend to trip out. Have I got a witness? But we could have said, don't trip off the trip. Or we could have used as a title, it ain't what it looks like. Simply, you know how Gilligan and all of them went to an island. Amen. And then when Gilligan and them got to the island, you had all these Zulu men with the mask and everything looking at them like they was crazy. Because when you go in uncharted territories, usually the people that are on there are always expecting the folks that are coming to be up to no good. But God fixed that, didn't he? We could have used as a subject, put it in the fire. Amen. Because there's a whole lot that went on. But the one thing that went on, he put it in the fire. We could have used as a subject when your, when your stance changes their mind. Because when we read this, we find out that Paul did what he did because of who he was. And the people looked at him and thought it was one thing. But when he stood in the power of God, 
it turned to be something else. And they went from thinking that he was a murderer to believing that he was a God because of what he stood for. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. And if we was to stand right there, I'd ask you, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yes. Amen. But if you stand for God, you will find out that every time the enemy comes up against you, he doesn't have the power to affect you Amen. because you have the power, the ability, and the faith to stand in the midst of what's going on. Yes. Have I got a witness? So in this, God shared with me that we're just going to talk about shaking it off. Yes. Because there are some of us that get attacked, but we don't know how to move past the attack. Yes. Have I got a witness? Some of us, some of us are in, in, in bad situations, and some of the situations we're in, Josh, is because we put ourselves there yes. against what God's leading for. Yes. Are, are you with me? So, so, sometimes, Pop, what we tend to do is we tend to bring people in that should not be here, but because they look good at the moment, we bring them to be a part, not realizing that they're defective instead of effective. Yeah. Uh, but we got to learn how to shake it off. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. There are times when, when when we get in relationships because she's so fine. She, she, uh, she got that pretty silky hair. It ain't real, but she got that pretty hair on her head. She got them nails on. She looking real good. She got a job making three dollars more than me. This is a good no, no, no. It look good, but it's not good for you. You got to learn how to shake it off. So, so there's a few things in this particular passage that I want to show you and I want to use as a representation of what it looks like for us today. Have I got a witness? And so I want, to, I want to read this again so that I can begin to share with you some things that should help us along the way. Yeah. It says, now when they had escaped, what did they escape from? If you look and you pay attention to the chapters before this, you will find out that Paul was on a journey and he was on his way to Rome. Mm. He was going by ship. Uh -huh. But on this particular ship, there were prisoners on the ship, and there were soldiers on the ship, and they were all headed. But listen, but Paul's position on the ship was he was on a journey. He was on a mission. He was on assignment. Have I got a witness? And what I want to share with you is this. When you're on assignment, mother, you better make sure that you understand that opposition is going to come. And in this particular situation, Paul's opposition was that he was shipwrecked. In other words, the ship got all messed up midway on the journey. But what I like about Paul is because Paul had so much faith in God, it didn't matter what was messed up around him. He kept his composure because he knew who was with him. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. I need somebody to understand this. I don't care how much hell break loose around you. If you are good with God, God is in the middle of that hell with you. And if he's in the hell with you, then hell won't have the, the ability to burn you or take you out. Especially if you can say to God be the glory, even for the hell that I'm going through right now. Come on here, somebody. Some of us have got to stop falling apart when we go through stuff and thank God for the stuff that we're going through. Because if we never go through anything, we can never get to anything. And if we never get to it, how do we look back and remember what God has brought us from and how he's taken us through to get us to where we're going? Yes, 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 Lord. Can I take a breath? I'm getting excited too soon. <laughs> Pop, it's start getting good until you get <laughs> Amen. I gotta, I gotta take a breath. So, so listen, they were shipwrecked. Uh -huh. Now the funny part was, when you research this, the Roman soldiers, they were scared uh -huh. as this particular thing happened simply because they knew that if any of the prisoners had escaped, mm -hmm. them being soldiers, their life would be on the line. If anybody, if any, if, if, if any prisoner had escaped. So, so they were afraid. Mm -hmm. But I need you to know something. <laughs> when you are dealing with people yeah. that got a good relationship with God, uh -huh. and where you lack, you need to understand that they pick up what you lack. Yeah. You just got to be able to see the glory of God in them yeah. and understand if God is with them, then he's got to be with me uh -huh. because I'm with them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm guilty by association. I, I, I ain't got to be your friend. I just got to be close enough to get what you got. <laughs> Come on here, somebody. And if God is going to protect you and I'm close enough to you, then I can be rest assured that I'm going to be protected too. And in the interim of all of that, I may be able to increase my faith 
to see that God still saw enough favor on him to allow a little to spill on me to keep me from what I thought was going to happen to take me to what God wanted to happen. So, so the boat fell apart. And it said some of them swam to the shore. But some of them hung on some debris and floated to the shore. <laughs> if I was preaching that particular thing, mama, I would just say this. Just hang on a little while longer. Hold on to something that don't look like anything. Because God can use anything to help you survive everything. If you don't believe it, the Bible talked to us about when he allowed the donkey to speak to the prophet. The prophet wasn't listening and God allowed the donkey to speak enough for the prophet to understand that God is really speaking to me. Yes. And so God can use a raggedy piece of tore up boat to help get you from danger to safety if that's what he so chooses to do. But you've got to understand that when God presents something, know that it's God and hang on to what God has in store for you. So now we see that now the shipwreck, they have gotten there and then they get to an island where they didn't know what to expect. But because of the grace of God, the people received them with open arms. Yes. The Bible says not only did he receive them, did they receive them, but they received them and looked at the conditions and made sure that they were comfortable when they got there. Hallelujah. Have I got a witness? Yes. But you've got to always, you've got to sometimes too be, be cautious about this. Because everybody that make it look good ain't doing it for the good reason. Ain't doing it for the right reason. Just because they came in here and said amen and said a good prayer don't mean that they got your best interest at heart. Just because they came and preached one good message don't mean that they're trying to help you to grow. Just because they gave you one offering of $27.33 don't mean they're trying to help you grow financially. Just because they came by here one day and helped you move one piece of furniture don't mean that they're looking to help build the church. I wish I had somebody up in here. But now you've got to understand that when God is before you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So they looked, they got there. And when we get down to verse number three, this is where I want to begin to unpack this thing. Because verse number C3 says, but when? Huh? So in other words, when it got to the word but, just Katie, when it got to the word but, whatever was going on before it got to but had to stop and shift and change directions. Are you with me? It says they were safe, they got to the island. The folks turned around and they gave us a fire. They made sure that we was warm. But, but Paul had gathered up. Now listen. Paul right here was showing you servanthood. Because now I come, Josh, to a place where people are serving me. But instead of me sitting and being comfortable with them serving me, I'm going to help and I'm going to assist and not just serving the ones that are with me, but serving everybody that's around. Because when I gathered up the sticks of wood, I didn't gather them up and put them in one section just for the folks that came in with me. But the fire was for everyone and I didn't want the fire to go out. So what did I do? I didn't wait for them to come and get some things. I went and got some sticks myself to make sure. What am I trying to say? Stop coming to church and waiting on the usher to do something for you. Stop coming in the house of God and waiting for the pastor to pray for you. Stop waiting for somebody to say something to you about something that you should already do. Why? Because if you are a child of God, you know what's expected of you in the house yeah, yeah, yeah. of God. Yeah, yeah. So now, it says, but when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, mm -hmm. laid them on the fire. The first thing I want to point out to you in this is this. The sticks right here, mm -hmm. Pastor West, I wanted to represent the crowds of folk uh -huh. that's always trying to rock with you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, somebody missed that one right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said he, he gathered up a bunch of sticks. Yeah. Every time Jesus did ministry, mm -hmm. there was always a bunch of people. Yeah. But in the bunch, there's always going to be something negative yeah. in the bunch. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. And if you don't believe me, the next time that you're in a crowd of people, just look around. And I guarantee you, if you use your spirit of discernment, you will find the negative in the middle of the bunch. When Jesus had the 12 disciples, there was one negative by the name of Judas. Every single time there was something going on, what do you mean, preacher? On Jesus' journey, every time he went somewhere, there was a group of people called the Sadducees and the Pharisees. 
Pharisees. And no matter what Jesus did, they was always going to have something to say about what he did. They knew the word. They understood the word. They studied the word. They could recite the word. But yet and still, they still were going to talk against the word simply because the word wasn't effective for them like it was effective for Jesus. What am I trying to say, Pastor West? You've got to make sure that some of the people that's walking and walking around you, you've got to understand that everybody that's with you can't go with you. Everybody that's with you are not necessarily for you. Everybody that's with you is not going to push you to the next level. But there are going to be some people that are with you that are talking about you while they're smiling in your face. They're sticking a knife in your back while you're not looking. Some of them are sticking a knife in your back while you're looking with them stretched arm strong arms of theirs reaching around the people see. Come on here somebody. Because now I need you to understand this. The reason why they do that is they're intimidated by your anointing. Yes, sir. Have I got a witness? But man will never tell you that they're intimidated by you. But what they'll do is allow themselves to be in a usable space for the enemy to use them. Huh? And when the enemy begins to use you, what he'll do is put an attack on God's people simply because if God's people are caught not looking, that's why the Bible says, watch and pray. Amen. Josh, it's all right to keep one eye open while you pray. Because I need you to understand that the snake will sliver up on you when you got both eyes closed. And you'll open up your eyes and he'll be looking at you like this. Yeah. Right up in your face. And by then, either you're going to be licked or you're going to be bit. But you ain't going to be able to get away because you didn't see him coming. So when you have crowds of people, crowds of people don't always mean that everything is going to be good. If we look at this last little incident about this Travis, whoever he was, what's that young man name? What's that? Help me somebody. What's that young man named that rapper got? Travis what? What's his name? Travis Scott. There you go. Travis Scott. Having a concert. Crowds of people. What happened? In that crowd, you had some folk that was negative. You had some folks that wasn't necessarily there to enjoy, but there were some people in a usable space to create some havoc, and we find out lives were lost. And things begin to happen. Watch. And now they're attacking Travis Scott for something that he had no control over. Come on, get somebody here. He, he can't control people stampeding. He can't control people rushing and pushing. He can, all he had control over was the thing he was assigned to do. And now everybody is on the bandwagon to pull him down for, for, for having a show. This is what you paid to come and see me do. And y'all act the fool and now it's my responsibility. I come by to tell you as a Christian, as a leader, as somebody that God trusts, you need to know you're just like Travis Scott. When you get in church and you preach and folks are getting saved, you better know that there's a crowd that's waiting to begin to start causing some stuff that will make you be the spotlight, that will put the, the, the enemy at, at okay. It will cause devil to want to sue you. Have I got a witness? It'll call hell to want to cause a case up against you. But I need you to understand something. When you're doing it the right way, the power of God still prevails Hallelujah. through all of the negativity. Hallelujah. Because this man stood up and says, eight people died, I'll pay for eight funerals. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta cancel a show, and it's two million people, or 500,000 people that came, I'm giving everybody their money back. Amen. So I'm letting you know this, I'm for what's right, and not trying to make it for myself. He could have turned around and said, y'all paid, y'all happened, y'all did it, it ain't on me. But it's something on the inside of him that says right is right and wrong is wrong. Whether it's my fault or not, some people died because of the fact that I put on a concert. And I'm going to just assume my responsibility. And so now when I do what I'm supposed to do, you can say everything about me that you think I didn't do. But make sure at the end of your sentence, you open up your mouth and say what I did do. I wish I had a witness. And therefore, Pastor West, when folks come by and say what you didn't do, you turn around and say, well, God used me to preach and 10 people came to Christ. God used me to go in the 
you and say, not guilty. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, Lord. So now, the first thing is, the sticks represented the crowd. This particular reason I say that is because in the crowd hides negativity. In the crowd hides maliciousness. In the crowd disguises the things that are coming up against you. Have I got a witness? And the crazy part is some of the stuff hiding in the crowd is stuff that you're familiar with anyway. Walk with me here, somebody. Uh -huh. There are many times where we get bitten by the people who are the closest to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the reason I say that is this. Because if you don't know, if you don't know a snake, uh -huh. you're not going to let the snake get too close. Uh -huh. Because you don't know the temperament of the snake. Yes, yes, yes. But when you will let a snake that you know get close to you, uh -huh. then that snake already knows how far he can get. Yeah, yeah. And that snake will slither up on you close enough to bite you when you're yeah. not looking. Because they understand that you trust them beyond what you see. Yeah. And you believe that they're rocking with you. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. But I come by to tell you this. That every so once in a while, you've got to even check the snakes that are closest to you too. Yeah. Because if you don't keep them back, then they're going to think that they can do anything that they want to do. Yeah. But in this particular incident, Paul didn't know that there was a snake inside of, 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 of the sticks. Yeah. Are you listening? He picked up a bunch of sticks with good intentions. Yeah. What am I trying to say? We pick up crowds of people with good intentions. Amen. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. Pop, we pick up crowds of people with the intentions of doing what? Sharing the gospel. Yeah. We pick up crowds of people with doing what? Sharing a food ministry, yeah. food blessing. We pick up a crowd of people to do what? Share good resources. Yeah. We pick up a crowd of people to do what? Lead them to Christ. Are you listening to me? So when we pick up a crowd of people, we're not necessarily interviewing each and every one of the people that we pick up, but we're picking up the people in hopes that when we get them to where we're going, that somebody will get it, not necessarily when we get there, but from the time we pick them up to the time we get where we're going. Amen. Amen. And it's awful that in the middle of some of them crowds, it's going to be a snake up in there that's going to be looking and waiting for the perfect opportunity to come out and latch itself on us. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. So now we understand that the sticks was representing the crowds. The crowds that we attract being a Christian. Come on up in here, somebody. Because every Christian is not a preacher. But every Christian has been assigned to preach the word. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. See, that went over. That, 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 somebody missed that one. Hallelujah. Every Christian is not a preacher. Amen. But every Christian has been assigned to preach the word of God. Hallelujah. Because if you know the word, you're supposed to share the word. You may not have to share the word through vocals, but you have to share the word through the living of your lifestyle. Mm. And either way it goes, if you know the word, you're responsible for sharing the word. Have I got a witness? So now we find that the, the people, that the crowds are attracted. The crowds are attracted to somebody in the crowd. Or there's a few people in the crowd that's not necessarily there for the same reason. The next thing I want you to see is this. That the viper itself, the viper here represented the haters. <laughs> Y'all don't like me this morning, but that's all right. I'm going to preach this thing anyway. The vipers represented the haters. The vipers represented something that's attacking you because they don't like you for whatever reason or another. This is what got me about this particular passage of scripture. Because it says when they got to the island that the people over on the island made a fire because not only was it raining, but it was cold. Amen. And what I want you to understand about this is snakes are warm blooded creatures. Mm -hmm. So when it's cold, snakes are in hibernation and you won't find snakes around when the weather is cold right. because it's too cold for them. They will die if they're not in a warm climate. Right. So, so this whole particular thing here, Mike, was completely different because now in the winter time, in the cold time, you find a snake that was inside of some sticks. You find a snake that was inside a crowd. What am I trying to say? That I need you to understand that haters don't have a season for hibernation. But haters are fair weather haters. They are haters in the summer. They are haters in the winter. They are haters in the spring. And they are haters in the
the fall. And no matter what it is, it don't take much for a hater to step into the form of hateration and come out of the crowd at any opportunity. Have I got a witness here? I need to ask y'all, have your hater showed his head or his face in the middle of a crowd that you was in lately? And sometimes a hater will pop up, but because you're so into what you're doing, you will miss the sign that the hater is close. Have I got a witness? If we look back to how cunning this, 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 this snake is, uh -huh. we go all the way back to the book of Genesis. And when we think about the book of Genesis, watch this. The Bible says that the snake is the most cunning animal of all creators, all the creatures that God ever created. The snake was the most cunning. If you ever look over in the book of Proverbs, it tells you to be as wise as a snake. Yeah. So in other words, snakes are smart. Amen. Huh? Amen. Snakes are cunning. Amen. And snakes are slick. Amen. So watch this. I need you to catch what happened there so you can catch what can happen here. So the Bible says, now listen, God gave order to Adam. Are you listening? And after he gave Adam to, an order to Adam, it does not say if Adam gave the order to Eve. I wouldn't want to say that Adam told Eve what God said, but according to the Bible, I never read where Adam said to Eve, God said, don't mess with that. Yeah. Come on in here, somebody. Yeah. But Pastor West, I'm going to ask you a question. When God tells you something, unless he say, don't tell nobody, yeah. do you immediately go home and tell your wife yeah. what God is telling you yeah. to or not to do? I, I, come on up in here, somebody, because you understand now, hey, I can go to hell all by myself. I don't need your help not doing what God said do. So I'm going to tell you, and if you do it, you're going to get in trouble. I ain't because I told you what you're not supposed to do. But if I don't tell her, Pop, and I don't tell her and she do it, now I'm subject to be in trouble because I didn't share the information. Have I got a witness? Amen. But now Adam here, listen, was told one thing. And now Eve is in the position where the cunningness of the snake, he slithered up on her. No matter of fact, hold on, let me, let me make this plain. He didn't slither, he walked up on her. Yeah. <laughs> People say, what do you mean he walked up on her? Because at this particular time, the snake had feet. The snake had feet. He was walking. He wasn't on his belly. He was walking. So he walked up on her. Now watch this. He walked up to her and he began to tell her opposite of what God told Adam. Are you listening? And I want to believe that whether Adam told her or not, he understood that that was the weaker vessel. Yeah. But what? I, but my question is this: Would he have did the same thing had Adam been present in the garden at the time he wanted to walk up? Mm -hmm. If I was a hush fell over Jerusalem right there. Mm -hmm. If Adam had been on the spot, would the snake still approach her and said what he said? Mm -hmm. Because remember, Adam was a man that God created. To be just like him. Yes. And he gave Adam the order. He also told Adam that he had dominion over everything. Are you listening? Yes. So at that time, I understand that Adam could have rebuked the snake and the snake would have had to leave. Yes. Because he had the power to do so. Yes. But the snake, because he was smart, he rose up on her when Adam was not there. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. And he did what he did when the presence of the strength and the power wasn't there. What am I trying to say? That a lot of times when the enemy comes up against you, he's thinking that he's coming up against you because you've walked away from the presence of the authority. Yes. 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 But when you understand that the authority that God has given you and the authority that rests in him, as long as I'm in his will, then his power and his authority is going to be around me all day, every day. Have I got a witness? When I wake up in the morning, it's there. When I go to sleep at night, it's there. When I move around through the day, it's there. But I've got to make sure that I stay connected to what is there. And throughout the day, i got to say, thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. Thank you, God, for waking me this morning. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you, God, for opening up doors. Thank you, oh God, for, for, for forgiving me of the things that I've done. That, 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 thank you, God. So I'm staying in his presence. Yeah. So when the enemy comes up against me, he has a second guess what he's going to do to me because whether or not he recognizes him or not, he still feels the power of him being there. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
So the enemy snuck up on her. He told her she responded to what he said. And see, he laughed at her because he understood that now she put all of them in trouble. But what he didn't realize is that the same God that set in their order it was the same God that had the power to give you the punishment. Yes. Yes. And he told, he told Eve, he said, you're going to suffer for the rest of your life yes. with the pains of childbirth. Yes. Yes. He told Adam, he said, you getting ready to suffer now because you're going to have to work with your hands. Mm -hmm. Now the labor is going to be hard now. Mm -hmm. But then the enemy said up there, <laughs> yeah. and he told them, he said, yeah, you too, Booga. Yeah. Look at here. Now you getting ready to slither on your belly for the rest of your life. Amen. And he cursed him and took his legs away from him. And now the enemy has got to slither around on his belly. Yeah. What am I trying to say to you? That when you stand on who God is, let the viper bite if he wants to. Let the viper do what he thinks he needs to do. But the same way God cursed him in the garden is the same way he'll curse him today. And he may not have to sliver because he's already slithering. But every time the enemy uses somebody to come up against whether you see them or whether you don't see them, the Bible says that you got to pray for your enemies. You got to love your enemies and pray for those that despitefully use you. So every time a viper bites you, say, God bless them in the name of Jesus. Every time they talk about you, you say, God, in the name of Jesus, allow your mercy and grace to rest upon them. Every single time you show them, God, that the love that you have in me shall up on them so they understand that they can't mess with me because of whose I am. Come on here. So we find that the same way that the viper jumped out the sticks and bought big Paul, it's the same way that a viper will come out of the crowd and bite you. But this is what I want you to get. There are some versions in here that begin to talk to us. And then it says that they were poisonous. But can I straighten something out for y'all right here? There's a difference between venomous and poisonous. Have I got a witness? When it's venomous, listen here, mother. When it's something that's venomous, what happens is the poison is put in your body based off of the bite from the thing that has the venom. Have I got a witness? And most of the secretion from the venom is something that is strong enough that can kill even a human. But when something is poisonous, you don't get poison from something that bit you, but you get poison from something that you bite. You get poison from something that you ingest. So in other words, if you say something with rat poison, it's not the rat poison on your skin that makes you sick, but it's the rat poison that you swallow in your system that uploaded into your bloodstream that made you sick. But yet when a snake bites you, it's direct into your system, whereas if it's poison, you have to ingest it in order for it to happen. So let's erase the fact that the snake was poison, the snake was venomous, and the snake's intention is to bite you and kill you because that is their need of defense. And when they believe that they're afraid of something, they will bite you so that it can make sure that it keeps you at bay and keeps you away from causing any danger to them. But when we look at it in the church sector, venomous people, when they bite you, what they're trying to do is this. They'll bite you with the attempt to kill your character. They want to bite you to kill your hope. They want to bite you to kill your joy. They want to bite you to kill your momentum. They want to bite you to kill your anointing. They want to bite you to kill your praise. They want to bite you to kill your worship. They want to bite you to kill what God is trying to have for you. They want to bite you to kill the open door. They want to bite, come on here somebody. They want to bite you to kill something that's happening in your life. But I come by to tell you, if you do like Paul do, Paul didn't lose his mind when he got bit. Paul didn't panic when he got bit. Paul didn't trip out when he got bit. But the Bible says when Paul got bit, he just... And look here, he didn't shake it off on the ground. He shook it off in the fire. Because when he shook it in the fire, he understood that the fire represented the power of God. And if I shake it off in the power of God, God will take what was trying to hurt me and he'll burn it up so I can't hurt nobody else. Because I got other people that are around me, Pop. And since people are around me, I need folks to understand something. That my assignment is bigger than my attack. My anointing is bigger than my circumstance. And every so once in a while, there's going to be some people that's going to come out of some sticks. There's going to be some people 
It's going to come out of the crowd. There's going to be some people that don't like me because they're intimidated by my anointing. And one thing about the vipers, especially in the church sector, most of the time the vipers are the ones that can't beat you. So they're mad about not being able to beat you. They're mad because they can't sing like you. Lady, 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 lady wits. When I heard you sing last week, I told your husband I would have never expected the power of that to come out of you because it seemed like you're so quiet and so meek and humble. But when you opened up your mouth, the power of God came out. And that's the kind of power that God uses when he wants to chase the devil up out of here. That's the kind of power that God uses when he wants to do a miracle to open up blind eyes. There's the kind of power that God uses when he wants to do like Paul and Silas and have an earthquake to shake some things loose. So I'm trying now. I'm trying to say there are some people, Sister West, that are vipers around you. They just ain't came out of the bush yet. But what I want to tell you here is keep on singing, keep on praising, keep on preaching, keep on being used. And the moment that it gets too hot and the vipers come out, when they bite you, stand in the power, stand in his wheel, stand in his anointing. Don't lose your mind. Don't look to the left and don't look to the right, but stand over the fire and shake it off. Don't shake it on the ground because it might go someplace else. But shake, shake it off in the fire. What am I trying to say? That the fire is, it's all consuming. That the fire is, it's all glory. That the fire is, it's all powerful. And the fire is there for you. So what I want y'all to do is be just like Paul. The enemy's gonna come against you, but my Bible says that when the enemy comes up against you, that my God will raise up a standard, and God's standard is too big for the enemy to overcome. So what am I trying to say? If you wanna practice a dance, you wanna practice the shape. In a while, you've got to shake things off, shake off what they say, shake off what they do, shake off how they act, shake off where they go, shake it off, 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 yeah, yeah, and look at look at look at look at look at what happened at the end of this. The people on the island. They sat back and said that because he got bit, that he must have been a murderer, that he must have done something wrong. What am I trying to say? That every time you do something to bless one of God's people, somebody always going to have something negative to say. Well, Pastor West, if I was you, I would have preached it like this. If I was you, I would have done it like that. If I was you, I wouldn't have said it like that. But the thing is, you ain't me. So hold up, swell up, back up a little bit. Because you ain't me, you ain't gonna think like me. You ain't gonna move like me. You ain't gonna trust like me. You ain't gonna act like me. You're not gonna have the favor like me. God's not gonna use you like me. So therefore, they're going to have what they want to say. But every time they say it, I want you to understand, to God be the glory. Because the fire that's burning on the outside is the same fire that's burning on the inside. And the fire is what attracted them to me. So therefore, I let it burn on the inside. 
shake off the trouble, to shake off the negativity, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. Can I get five people to lift up your hands and begin to shake it off? Shake it off! Yeah. I'm sorry, I got excited. I'm, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I got excited for a minute. Because I had to shake some things off. Can I share, can I share something with you all? Let me share this. You see, people have it mixed up. Perhaps the worst part, they have it mixed up. Because what happens is they think because you have a title uh -huh. that you're not subject to problems. Yeah. That things don't happen to you. Yes. For some reason they seem to think that we're superheroes. Mm -hmm. And I come by to tell you that even superheroes have kryptonite. Yeah. 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 Superman ain't strong all the time. Yeah. Put some kryptonite by him, what happened? Yeah. Come on here. So, 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 we have kryptonite. Yeah. And so what happens is every once in a while we've got to share a situation with you to show you that we human too. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. So watch this. In case you guys don't know Mother West, Mother Pastor West and Mother Maddie knows, but the building that we occupied over here in Compton, they sold the building and didn't tell us nothing. Yeah. And then told us you gotta be out by December the first. Yeah. No, no, no nothing. Just it's gone, you gotta go. Mm. And so when you begin to do research and understand some things, you come to find out that the people that are in position are the people that are maliciously doing things that are not lined up with the will of God. Yeah. And the Bible talks about doing things for selfish gain. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. And so the selling of the church had to do with just me getting some money. Yeah. It, it didn't have nothing to do with, oh, you guys are impacted, you guys are impacted the neighborhood, yeah. or whatever. I don't care because I got 700,000 reasons why I want to get rid of it. Right. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. So let me show you what happens. So that happens, and then the viper really wants to come out because they said, okay, well, we'll you take anything in the church that you want. Anything in the building, you guys, you're entitled to it. We don't have a place to put it. The church needs to be empty. Take what you want. So I tell them, well, the only thing we're interested in is, is the organ. They said, okay, take the organ. Then I get a phone call from the realtor, the realtor this week. Now, mind you, for the last two weeks, I've been dealing with this. I, and I've been, Pastor West, I've been shaking, but I've been missing the fire. <laughs> because it keeps biting me. It keeps coming back and biting me again. And, and, and so, the realtor called me and says, are you interested in buying the organ? Hallelujah. <laughs> and I said, why am I going to buy something that's been given to me? Yes, yes. And he said, well, when did you talk to them? I said, about two weeks ago. Who did you talk to? Pastor Robinson. Mm. He says, oh, okay. Let me make a phone call. He calls me back and says, well, I got a message from them yesterday that said they're selling the organ for $4,000. And if you want it, wow. that you can buy the organ. Otherwise, they're coming to get it. Wow. About five minutes later, I get a text message from, 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 from Atlanta, Georgia, from Pastor Robinson. That says, hey God, I forgot and had to be reminded that the organ wasn't mine to give you. Hallelujah. So, so if you want it for 3500 now it was 4000 about five minutes ago. Now it's 3500 And my response to him was, I'm good, Doc. Since we're docking around here. Yeah. I'm good, Doc. He thumbs up. See, in his mind, he's thinking, okay, I'm buying it. No, in my mind, I'm like, I'm cool on y'all. Matter of fact. Yeah. Are you listening? Because yeah. what's happening is this. If a snake bites you, yeah. and you keep going in the same area with the snake, yeah. Amen. then you're supposed to be bit again. Right. I refuse for you to bite me again. Right. Because this is the second time I've been bit by the same snake. Yeah. In the course of 15 years. Mm. Are you listening to me? Yes. Not the same way that I was bit before. Yeah. So what am I trying to say? So I got bit, so I have to shake off. In order to stand firm. Yeah. So I wonder, okay, God, you gave me this message. But then I wondered why last week he gave me the message about Aiken. Because when he told me about that, they take it out that Aiken can't have the organ. At that moment, and my wife reiterated, she says, 
Maybe God said, don't take nothing out that building. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Because right. how do you know it ain't something on that stuff? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That's going to make the whole church family suffer. Yeah. Amen. For something that was unrighteous. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. At that moment, God says, everything you want, I am the provider, and I can give it to you. Right. Not use, but right. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. Trust me, mother. Didn't you read that today when you talked about it, Malachi? Mm -hmm. He says, test me and see, won't I? Mm -hmm. My job is just to make sure that the folks are in a position to trust him so that they can see that he's with Do our job and trust, mm -hmm. and then wait and see. What am I trying to say, y'all? See the grow? We got a little bit more shaking to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because it's some snakes that still think they're attached. Hallelujah. Come on here, somebody. It's some snakes that keep on slithering up out of these sticks yeah. that want to come up in here and bite every chance they get. Yeah. Now watch this. Mm -hmm. They're not biting the ones that are here mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. But they'll bite the ones that are not here. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that are not here share the venom with the ones that are here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But I come by to tell you that I rebuke the bite, I rebuke the venom, I rebuke anything that tries to kill our momentum. Because at this point, we are moving forward and we're not looking back. And so for whatever the enemy wants to do to us, I need him to know. I'm serving him notice today. The fire is burning and we are on a shaking mission. Because we will not go into 2022 with the same bite. We will not go down there with the same venom. If you want to get us, you better bring a different snake. You better bring him in some different bushes. And you better make sure his bite is a whole lot stronger. Because as of right now, and as for me in this house, we will serve the Lord. And we will do it according to what the Lord says. And I, I invite every hater to come up in here if they want to. Because we ain't trying to convert you. We just going to put you in front of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And let the Holy Ghost have his way. Yes. Have I got a witness? Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all give me a high five. We're going to shake off some stuff. High five. We're going to shake it off. We're going to shake it off. Yes. Amen. And it ain't just in church. Yes. When these folks around you, Everything. your so-called friends, yes. you better learn how to shake it off. Yes. And watch this. If they if they bite you, they ain't your friend anyway. All right. Amen. Amen. Have I got a witness? Because yeah. friends don't bite with intentions to kill. Yeah, yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. So that being said, you are not feel bad about shaking them out of your sphere of influence. Mm. Because mm -hmm. you need to be surrounded by people that's going to do what? Go help push you to the next level in God. Yes. And if they ain't trying to go where you're going, then you don't need to waste your time with them. Hallelujah. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Real quick, I'm going to share this one little thing with you, and then we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna end our service. Mm -hmm. I have, <clears throat> I have a, 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 a play aunt that used to live across the street from me, and she has a brother. Stone cold alcoholic, DUI after DUI, always in trouble. In his mid-70s, chasing after girls, <laughs> young enough to be his granddaughters, <laughs> thinking he's 27 all over again. And so his sister got mad and said, I'm sending you back to Florida with your kids so you can worry them and stop worrying me. <laughs> so he got back and hooked up with his oldest daughter's mama. <laughs> Unknowing that his oldest daughter's mama is an evangelist. <laughs> so she said, if and you want to be with, up in chair with me, you're going to have to start going to church. Mm -hmm. Say the man got suits here in church every Sunday on the front row like a deacon. <laughs> <laughs> what, what am I trying to say? That when you're serious enough about God, yeah. He can use you to change the life of yes, anybody. Lord. Amen. Are you listening? Yes, Amen. He left from here from rehab. Mm. He left from rehab. He got out of rehab and got on the plane two days later. Mm. Not knowing that his rehab set him up for his ultimate rehab. All right, all right. And his life changing experience. Yes. Because God set this woman in place mm. even years later after the kids were grown. To be the instrument to lead him to Christ. Right, amen, right, amen. Right. What am I trying to say? His mind had to be able to shake off the things that was keeping yes. him from getting what God yes. had for him. Yes. So when he shook off alcoholism, when he shook off the womanizing, when he shook off of that, he was able to see the blessing that God had standing before him. Right. And now his life is better than it's ever been. Brand new car, brand new home, getting ready to have a wife, 
in church with a relationship with God, yeah. you can't ask for it no better. Mm. But what would have happened if he hadn't been with somebody that knew how to shake it off? Amen, amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. So hook up with folk. Have friends in your life that know how to shake some things off. All right, all right. Because you may never understand it yourself, especially when you're going through it. Yeah. But if you got with somebody, if they was just your friend, you ain't got to talk to them every day. But if you can just talk to your friend and you can share with them what's going on, they can tell you, baby, when I went through that, you know what I did? I got on my knees, I prayed, I got up and realized I had the power, and I shouted my way out of that thing. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I shaked all that yes. negative stuff up off of me. Yeah. Because the heavier you are, the less chance you have to ascend. Right. Because you can't go up if, you, if you're too heavy. That's right. Have I got a witness? Amen. Try to put a, a weight inside of a helium balloon, a helium yeah. filled balloon, and you'll find out that the balloon won't float. That's right. But if you take the weight out, you'll find out that the balloon will float. Amen. What am I trying to say? Right. Don't be weighed down with stuff that God ain't right. never intended for you to be weighed down with. That's right. Shake some things off. Right. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. It's okay, it's okay. Just shake some to shake some stuff off. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen. With every, Amen. Put your hands together for God. With every eye closed and every head bowed. This is a time of the service where we give you an opportunity, if you don't know God, for the pardoning of your sins, to accept Him for the first time or to rededicate your life to God. This is a call for you. If you want to rededicate your life or accept God for the first time, you can just simply raise your hand where you are. Amen. You may be someone that's looking for a church home. There are two churches that are represented here today. You have Cornerstone. You have Cedar Grove. You're looking to become a member of a church. Two wholesome churches that are teaching the word of God. I would love to have you come aboard and to be a worker. If that is you, just raise your hand where you are. And then you may be someone that's looking for prayer. You're standing in need of prayer now. Just simply raise your hand. While the saints are here, we can touch and agree with you. Amen. As I see that there are none, but there's still yet room at the cross. Amen. 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 God is good. God is good. God is good.